Hi, welcome to today's Melalani Minute. It's been a while uh, because of Christmas and so forth since we were part of uh, working through my series here in Matthew, uh, but I want to just kind of remind you where we were. We're in Matthew, working through the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and we're in Matthew uh, chapter 6. Last time we talked about the first four verses, uh, which talked about how we need to do our charitable deeds in secret. And the reason is, is because if we do them uh, out where everyone will see them, we get the reward uh, now in the recognition of mankind. Now we're going to move into the next passage. And the reason I wanted to repeat that is because we're going to see kind of that same repeated theme of doing our spiritual services in secret so that we can be rewarded by God versus the reward of the applause of man. So if you would uh, look with me in Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be, um, today we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 8. And he says, uh, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in a secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will uh, be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows all, th all th for the, your Father knows the things uh, you have need of before you ask. So, right there, uh, right off the bat, we see this repeating. Don't be doing your prayers in public for, to be seen by men. To be praying in private. Now he's not saying there you should never have a public prayer, that prayer has no place in a public worship service. That's not his point. What he's saying here is that we are not to be, our, our primary prayer life is not to be out here to be seen by men. And for that matter, even when we are doing those public prayers, it is not to be, to be pleasing to men or to show how spiritual we are to men so that we can get the applause of men. Uh, even there towards the end, and I'm going to get into some of the nitty gritty there here in a minute, uh, but he's kind of still pushing that issue, right? It's not about what it looks like to men. It's about your relationship with God. It's about your conversation with God. Think of it this way. If it's about the relationship, it's going to be similar to to a marriage relationship. A marriage relationship has to have more than just a public show when people are around and you say nice things about uh, your spouse. No, when you're in private, when you're in that time when it's just the two of you, you, you need to have that, that conversation, that flow of discussion. But he's, that's why he's talking about going in, in private and praying. But then he says, don't have these vain repetitions. What is a vain repetition? Well, uh, one of the most obvious ideas of vain repetition is something that you just say over and over and over that doesn't mean anything. Uh, now, he's not saying don't pray for the same thing over and over. No, in fact, we know from other places in Scripture, we should pray for things repeatedly. Uh, but what he is saying here is don't just be repeating words that don't have any meaning. Uh, the, the Greek word here... Uh, the Greek word here, uh, it, it means, it's got, it's got a couple of different meanings, uh, but the idea is of babbling when you pray, or of rambling on and on, using words that don't add any meaning. You know, the idea uh, that too often we have where someone will just pray and they'll pray and they'll pray and they'll pray about something that they could have covered in just a few seconds, yet they'll pray for her. 10 minutes, you know, bless, bless the, the dinner, the dinner blessing takes forever. Why? Because they're using all these flowery words to make it sound better, but it doesn't add anything to it. Uh, another example might be if you, if you see someone who changes their verbiage when they pray. Think about that for a moment. We shouldn't change our verbiage. When we pray to God, it should be a communication just as we would have if we were talking to someone in our family. Uh, obviously, we need to hold him in respect, but that should be the level of communication. If you don't speak to your family in Old English, why would you pray in Old English? If you don't use 
uh, $10 words in your normal vocabulary, why would you use $10 words in your prayers? That's defeating the purpose. The purpose is to have intimate communication with our Father in Heaven. Another idea, like I said, battling. Using words or phrases that don't mean anything or that don't apply. Uh, the idea here, uh, maybe you can, you can think of it in a, in a pagan tradition where uh, they repeat an incantation to try to get uh, the spirits or whoever to, to do their bidding. And if you don't think that this is an issue in Christianity, think again. Uh, if you think about it for a moment, praying the rosary to get God to move in your defense. Now granted, we Baptists don't do that. Uh, but we probably have other things that tend to be in that same kind of thing, a tradition that we use. How about simply repeating the Lord's Prayer? Uh, it's coming up here. We'll talk about that a little more later. But simply repeating the Lord's Prayer without actually following the instructions that Christ has given us, that can become just a vain repetition. It's just something that we say to be a good Christian, to be spiritual. But that's not the idea. We're missing the point of prayer. No, the idea is that we can go in to our private space and we can pray and we can have that intimate, intimate communication with God. And when we are having our public prayers, that we have that public pr uh, communication with God. It's a time to talk to God. It's not a time to repeat the points of the sermon or to show how spiritual we are in any other way. It's simply a time for us to pray to God. If we're praying as part of this worship service, it's the part where we ask God to help us in that part of the worship service or in this part of our life. So as we think about prayer, let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for uh, being a God who listens to our prayers and a God who wants us to pray to you. Lord, I pray that you would be with us. Help us uh, to come to you in prayer and in honesty and sincerity in, in uh, the privacy of our own hearts and our own homes, Lord. We just pray that you would help us to, to pray, uh, to commune with you, and not for the uh, not for the praise of men. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.